In categorical logic, you'll sometimes be asked to grab the converse, the obverse, and the contrapositive of certain statements. So let's go over how to do that exactly. Let's start with conversion, since I think it's the easiest one to do. And it's actually very straightforward. All you need to do to get the converse of a categorical statement is just swap the subject and predicate. So if you have an A-type statement, such as a, all A or B, the converse of that statement is just all B, R, A. If you have no A or B, the converse is no B, R, A. And so on and so forth. Some B, R, A. And some B are not A. And that's really all there is to it. So sometimes I think what people find tricky about this is that it's remarkably simple, so they think they missed something. All that you need to do is just swap the subject and the predicate, and you'll have the converse. But okay, let's move on to the trickier aversion. To get the obverse of a statement, you're going to have to remember your complements. And just as a quick refresher here, the complement of a category is just all of the stuff that falls outside of that category. So first, let me just show you the obverse of all A or B. In order to get that, there are two things that you need to do. First, remember, A-type statements are universal affirmative statements. Aversion requires that you turn them into negative statements, or if they're negative, turn them into affirmative, and that you replace the predicate with its complement. That sounds like a lot. Let's just write it down first. So this becomes no A, R, non, B. And this becomes all A, R, non, B. And this will become some A, R, not, non, B. And this will become some A, R non B. In order to keep track of what you need to do, I find it useful to break it down into steps. So here's an A type statement, all A or B. And there are two things that you need to do. The first is, if it's affirmative, as an A type statement is, you're going to make it negative. So turn this into no A. Let me get rid of that dot. RB. And then the next step is to grab the predicate and turn it into its complement. A R non B. And that's all there is to it. And you'll do this for all of them. So if you have, let's go ahead and say an I type statement, as I do above, let's actually use some words. Uh, some dogs are mammals. Then the first step, since this is a particular affirmative, right? Some dogs are mammals. The first step would be turn this into a negative. So some dogs are not mammals. And then the next step, running out of space, the next step in order to get your obverse would be to grab the predicate and replace it with its complement. So some dogs are not non-mammals. And that's what there is to aversion. It's a little tricky, but with practice, you will get there. Just remember, there are two steps. First, if it's an affirmative statement, make it negative. If it's negative, make it affirmative. And then second, you want to turn that predicate into its complement. All right, let's move on to the third and final type of conversion that you'll be, or well, that's not the right word to use, but the third and final transformation that you're going to be asked to do. 
And that's contraposition. And contraposition is actually not as tricky as aversion, but there are still a couple of steps. So the contrapositive of all A, R, B is all non-B are non-A. And you'll see that all I had to do was swap the subject and predicate and replace them with their complements. So the same thing happens here. No non-B are non-A. Some non-B are non-A. And some non-B are not non-A. And that's it. And if we wanted to break this down into smaller steps, it's also going to have two steps, and it's relatively straightforward. So for instance, and let's use words, an A-type statement, such as all, let's say, pets are dogs. This is, of course, false, but it'll work. All pets are dogs. The first step would be to switch, just swap, the subject and predicate, so that it becomes all dogs are pets. And then you're going to go ahead and get the complement of both the subject and predicate. And I don't think there's enough room, so I'm going to scooch down a little further to get all non-dogs are non-pets. And that's all there is. So honestly, I think aversion is the trickiest one because you have to switch the type of statement that you're dealing with. Whereas conversion and contraposition, you get to stay with the same type of statement, A, E, I, or O. But anyway, now to answer what's probably the most important question is what's the point of doing this? Why, why do we have these three different kinds of transformations? And the point is, some of these transformations are valid and some are not. So let's just take as an example, if you have no dogs are cats, what's interesting is that the converse of this statement, that no cats are dogs, follows validly. In fact, these mean the same thing. And this is true for a few statements when it comes to certain transformations. So here's what they are. For conversion, the valid transformations are going to be for E-type and I-type statements. Those are going to be valid. It will not work for A-type and O-type. So if you use conversion on an A-type, there's no guarantee that the statement you'll get out of that will be true, given that the original statement was true. For upversion, it turns out that all of them are valid inferences. And for contraposition, It's valid for A type and for O type. Now it would take too long to work through all of these, but let's go ahead and look at a couple of valid examples and a couple of invalid examples. So let's take contrapositives. And this can be a little hard to wrap your head around sometimes. But here is an example. So just the standard, all dogs are mammals. Well, the contrapositive of this is all non-mammals are non-dogs. And this is true. And notice that because this is true, it's contrapositive is also true. Think about it. 
non-mammals would be the category of all of the things that are not mammals. So in here, you're going to have toasters and you're going to have trees and so on and so forth. Well, of course, all of the things that are not mammals are also going to be things that are not dogs. Why? Because all of the things that are dogs are mammals. These, it's not merely that this is a valid inference. These terms are what we call logically equivalent. In terms of logic, they mean the same thing. Intuitively, it seems like we're saying different things since this is about non-mammals and non-dogs, and that's fine. That's The semantics are different. But these are logically equivalent, and later on when we get to mapping these out, we'll see that they map exactly the same way. Anyway, if that didn't make sense, you can just not think about that. We'll get to that in a later video. So just to take another example, uh, let's do a version since it's always valid. In other words, it's also uh, always logically equivalent. If you take something like no cats are dogs, well, the obverse of this is going to be all cats are non-dogs. And yeah, that's intuitively right. In fact, these just say the exact same thing. So there's nothing very special going on here. They're each other's obverse. Uh, let's take one that actually doesn't work. And this is going to be pretty simple to come up with. So here's the converse. So we're going to say all dogs are mammals. That's true. But it's converse. All mammals are dogs. Well, that's false. So conversion does not work on A-type statements or on O-type statements. It only works on E-type and I-type statements. And contraposition only works. Let me just scroll right back up. It's really important to keep that in mind when you're being asked for these. So conversion only works for E-type and I-type. Aversion only work well, aversion works for all of them, A, E, I, and O, and contraposition only works for A-type and O-type statements. One final point. What exactly can we do with this? So other than just being asked to provide the obverse, converse, and contrapositive, uh, what exactly is the function that these can serve? How can this make our lives easier? Later on, when we are evaluating arguments, you may come across some really annoying, complicated statements. So you might have something like, all cats are non-dogs. And this can be a little annoying to map. But since you know that this is equivalent to all cats, or sorry, no cats are dogs, through aversion, and so this is just the obverse, you can just rewrite this statement as this one. And this is much easier to work with. 